Computers and software are now a part of everyday life. We use email, set up websites, and some of us run our own businesses. We are able to use these services without having to host our own massive IT infrastructure, hiring tons of staff to operate it, spending a lot of money and getting mired in lengthy and complicated procurement processes. If you can do this easily, why can't the government? The federal government has an extensive infrastructure, a broad user base and agencies with a variety of missions and complex suites of applications. To address these challenges, the Federal CIO Council has charged the government to leverage cloud computing services. So what is cloud computing? According to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, cloud computing provides scalable IT capabilities that are offered as a service over the Internet to multiple users. Many users shared pooled IT resources, reducing costs and resulting in greater computing efficiency. The federal government is focusing on security, privacy and procurement as it moves toward cloud computing. Traditional IT can call for large data centers and server farms, which are a serious investment and require 24-7 IT oversight and energy to power and cool the servers. The federal government has hundreds of these centers around the country that often perform similar tasks, such as providing email or web hosting, and are generally used at a fraction of their capability. They typically have large carbon footprints due to their enormous energy consumption and have to comply with strict environmental controls. Cloud computing can be viewed as the green computing option as it promotes sustainability and has a much smaller carbon footprint by limiting duplicated efforts and utilizing computing power more efficiently. Cloud computing also offers scalability, meaning you can scale capacity and processing power on demand. Cloud computing is evolving and is not an immediate solution for all government computing needs, but it can give the federal government the same opportunity the private sector enjoys to reduce spending while making better use of staff and resources with a more forward-thinking, environmentally sensitive approach. Cloud computing can change the way government leverages technology at a lower cost, faster, greener. So with that, what I want to talk about is the shift that we're trying to make and what the president wants to focus on. What we want to be able to do is we want to make sure, like the Department of Education and the IRS, one of the problems they're working on is figuring out how do they simplify access to student aid. Right now, if you think about access to student aid, filling out the FAFSA form, which is the student aid form, is more complicated than the 1040 form. And part of the reason is for far too long, what agencies have been focused on is on infrastructure. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're lifting up the role of the CIO so they're focused on addressing the problems. What the IRS and Department of Education did is they've partnered together, and now with one click, the IRS data can automatically populate the FAFSA form, and they're going to be launching that shortly eliminating over 70 questions and over 20 screens. That's what CIOs should be focused on, solving business problems that serve the American people rather than constantly deploying infrastructure in duplicative ways where you end up with 23 data centers in one agency. And that is what this president has charged us to do, and this is where the federal government is moving in the coming years. Thank you very much, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Thank you Bill. And now we'll take questions from news media here. Um, I would ask for you to please wait for the mic, stand, and state your affiliation. Are there any questions from the media here? Yes. Hi, uh, Louis Traeger with Washington Internet Daily. Can you give us some insight into uh, why the federal government might not have moved uh, before this year more strongly in this direction? So part of the reason is there are, are legitimate concerns around security. And secondly, the evolution of uh, cloud computing in terms of being able to scale and provide those solutions. We're seeing that happen in the private sector. And unfortunately, because of those concerns, 
the government did not try to address them historically. The government just accepted the answer that security cannot be addressed and uh, that that's cost us billions of dollars as a result. Now what we're doing is we're addressing those issues and we want to make sure that the industry also rises to the occasion to ensure that the solutions they provide bake in security as part of the architecture. Thank you. We'll take a question here and then we'll go to the phone for a question. There's a question here. Hi, Matt Bigler, uh, CBS News, KCBS Radio. Does cloud computing assure that these government websites won't be more vulnerable since they're all linked together and possibly uh, vulnerable to cyber attack from another country? And that's why uh, security is central to that equation. If you consider what's happening in a number of agencies right now, I would argue that in some cases they're more vulnerable because the smaller agencies may have data centers that are the size of a little closet. Uh, and they haven't really embedded security in, and you don't have people who are 100% dedicated to maintaining that infrastructure. Uh, so what we want to make sure from a policy perspective is that security is front and center as we look at these products and as we make a responsible decision towards moving towards cloud computing. Thank you. Now we'll take a question from Federal News Radio. Good, good morning or good afternoon, Vivek. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, a uh, quick question. Uh, my understanding is that when you talk about infrastructure and $19 billion spent, most of that money is spent on classified and very sensitive data, and very little bit is spent on the stuff you're talking about, the recreation.gov, the um, sign-in to make it my NIH page, some, something similar to the pilot, where, where this cloud, really, you need the private cloud. So I guess the two-parter is, is that still the case? And the second part is, how is NASA Ames being involved? How are they going to act as the private cloud for government? So, so not necessarily, because if you think about uh, the, the, the budget itself um, and the number of agencies in the data center, the majority of it is not necessarily on the classified side. As a matter of fact, a lot of the classified uh, infrastructure isn't accounted as I talk about uh, the $19 billion. Uh, and as we think about the value chain, what we want to do is we want to begin with uh, starting with applications and solutions that could be moved over, uh, number one, uh, not just websites. Because I think you, you think about the federal government, there are over 24,000 plus websites just within the federal government. And that's evolved over multiple platforms and the number of servers. And you look at the servers, you've got about 7 to 25 percent utilization in the majority of these servers. And so you have underutilization of resources and infrastructure. And so what we're trying to do is not just target, and that's why this is a journey that may take up to a decade. What we want to be able to do is also go after the business processes within agencies and the infrastructure um, that uh, currently people are hosting or building data centers for. And if you look at the budget request, a number of agencies are looking at acquisition of new data centers rather than leveraging infrastructure that may already exist. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the news media? Hi, Brandon Bailey with the San Jose Mercury News. Um, the app store that you demonstrated, uh, and, uh, how soon can an agency CIO actually go on that site and start downloading software or accessing services? I believe uh, Department of Energy actually already has gone. We launched it today, um, and uh, they can begin today in terms of leveraging it. And the store itself will evolve um, over time as more and more providers get onto that store. And the way they get on is through the General Services Administration, through GSA, uh, and through the competitive process. So we also want to make sure that procurement rules and regulations and competition is live and healthy in this space. And so they'll have to go through the GSA process, but it's, it's uh, live right now. Thank you. Um, we have time for one more question, I believe, and that is from um, right here, I guess. Hi, Miguel Health with the New York Times. I was wondering if you could address a little bit more the 